Today on Expert Island, we're gonna be talking about the JBL Eon One. So that's what today's episode's all about. We're gonna do sound tests, we're gonna take some videos up close up, we're gonna see it in all different ways, shapes and forms. I'm even going to put it up together and take it apart. So that's what's on today's episode. Okay, so here we are. We've taken the cover off at the actual top. So this is what a, a mid piece would look like. Full plastic cover frame, screwed in the back, blah, blah, blah. The attachments are located on the bottom. Now, when it comes to the attachments, uh, when I first got it, I thought, well, you know, they're okay, but some of the other ones are better. And I've learned that after taking this apart and putting it back together about, you know, a dozen plus times, these get a little softer, but the lockdown is really nice and solid. So, you know, good idea, I guess. That's what it really comes down to. Uh, gets everything set up properly, and that's what's going on right there. So you do get two spacers to build up the unit, and then you get the top. Now the top comes, it's got a nice grill cover on it, and don't take this off. Uh, you know, uh, you could void your warranty, of course, and you could damage it. So let's not you know, go home and do this. But I thought it's important to take it off here so this way I can show you exactly what's going on. So this grill is three-sided, so this way all the sound can diffuse and come out of this thing and fill a room really, really well. Uh, it's also really nicely made, so it's got nice angles to it. The whole thing matches as a quick set. So that's what's going on. And one other thing, there's mesh on the top. And why is there mesh on the top? Because when you actually look at the driver package, which we'll get into a lot of detail, but we'll just look at the top, it's open on the top because this actual driver points on a, almost a 45 degree and that means the sound has to be able to escape from the top of the unit right here. So that's why that grill is made the way it is. Now, all of this is gonna get you 130 watts and it's really what's gonna carry that dB volume level that they talk about as peak 118. Now that's not what I'm gonna say real world, but without it, all you have is a lot of bass. 10 inch woofer, a lot of bass. So here, what's going on, and this is the important part, uh, it doesn't just look like an array, it is an array. So when we look at the profile of the actual unit, we're gonna see that the six drivers, one facing downward, upward, two on a slight angle, two straight on. So when we hold it up like this, we get a better profile view of it. So we got driver here, driver down here, and then we got one slightly on an angle, another one slightly on an angle, and two firing straight out. This means the people sitting right in front of the actual unit are really gonna get some great sound out of it, but it's also gonna carry around and throughout the entire crowd uh, and these firing right across the room. So that's the big advantage of this. Uh, if it looks familiar, this portion here, uh, because if you look at the, uh, the Pro, the uh, Eon One Pro, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, if you look at the Eon One Pro, this is all you see. The cover is designed to cover, well, I'll go over all of this and not just straight. This minimizes the overall size because that's a portable rechargeable model. That's what you pay the extra money for on that one. So this is really nice that we get an opportunity to take this off. So it doesn't just look nice. Uh, it's practical and it's doing a specific job. So there you go. Again, you can collapse any of the units down from top to bottom simply by just choosing to have two or only one, or if you're sitting down in front of a small group of uh, 10 people, uh, you can have this right on top of the base module. So that's what's going on there. 130 watts, amazing, right? All that from there, six two inch drivers. So we'll put the cover back on. We're gonna do a little sound test on it as well. Uh, so let's take a look inside the actual unit. Well, not inside, sorry, I'm not taking this one apart. Let's take a look uh, at the actual control panel on the base module. So if we take a closer look inside the actual unit, we'll realize that it has six channels going across. So we've got one, two, three, four, and five, six. Now, it also features Bluetooth on the unit, and a feature that I like is a master volume up on top. Down below, we've got monitor out, so if we wanted to hook up a second unit, we can certainly jump one unit via the RCAs to the next unit using coming across to here. So this being our input, this being our output. Now, if we come back to the beginning, channel one and two are identical. What do we have got? We've got treble for our highs, bass for our lows. We even have reverb control on the unit, which we can turn on and off simply by pushing this button down here. 
Now, when we get down one more knob, we're gonna have our volume control, which could also be our line level control, and we have our choice to go between a microphone or an actual mic input. So, at the bottom is the actual input itself, which is a combo jack. Now, the combo jack is basically gonna give us the option to use either uh, a TRS, quarter inch, or we can use an XLR. Your choice, regardless of the actual equipment you have. So you'll be able to use the first two lines exactly the same in that fashion. Now we get to channel three and four. Channel three and four is in its own little box, has its own little volume gain controls here. Again, we've got two inputs. So because it's a stereo line, both of them are connected to one, channel three and four. So it could be either quarter inch or RCA as the input. Again, this is to make things convenient, regardless what you're gonna plug into it. On five and six is where they also connect the Bluetooth option to it, which you can turn on and off, so you don't have any accidental pairing to your speaker. And you've got the ability to have a 3.5, uh, a 1 8 jack. Now it's a stereo input jack, so again, from your phone, tablet, anything you wanna plug into there as a backtrack, let's say, would be an easy way to get that connected. Master volume, so you can now mix everything you've got plugged in, and then just use the overall volume for your master track. Now remember, channel five and six, it's not in the box, but this is the actual volume control right here for five and six. So that covers pretty much everything when it comes to those functionalities right there. So that's everything we've got. Everything's plugged in, everything's line controlled, you're all set, just turn up the master volume and you're ready to go. Nice thing is, is have some music that you like to play or that you do play and that you've recorded yourself. So this way you can use the Bluetooth, use your phone, go into the room, be it a, a pub or a bar or a cafe, do a sound check to see how it sounds at the other end of the room versus within 10 feet of it so you can do any sound adjustments you need to do. Uh, that's a really great feature for the Bluetooth, also very convenient to operate that way. So here's a look at it straight on from the backside. Uh, we'll notice that once the actual columns are removed, we've got an open cavity. So this is the actual size of the unit. This extra portion here is all for storing all the units. Uh, you also notice that the mixing board that's built in is on an angle, which is easier access from above versus from behind. So you don't have to bend over and look down at the actual controls on your knees to figure out what's going on. So they move all that up here. So all we have up here is we've got a heat release port on top and bottom. We've got our main power, which is, by the way, switchable between 110, uh, sorry, 115 and 230. We also have our proper safety third-party certificate, which basically means it meets all the requirements around the world for safety as a unit goes. And that's pretty much it. I mean, there's not a whole heck of a lot going on back here besides that. These are the important things. My safety, it is manufactured in China. It's, of course, designed, like they always say, in California. Uh, and our maximum power consumption. So if you do have to run it off a generator, it's 430 watts max, uh, regardless if you have it at uh, 100 or 240 volts, it's self-adjusting once you switch it over. So that's everything here. Now, the other big plus about this guy is the power cord that goes in here. It is 10 feet long. So you don't always have to use an extension cord because you're not always plugging in a four or six foot cable. You got a 10 foot cable that's gonna go on that guy right there. So that pretty much covers all the back features on it. Again, everything's mostly concentrated up on top, very little in the back except for that power switch. All right, so we have it on the floor and we wanna do just a quick setup to give an idea how long it's actually gonna take. So we're gonna put a clock on the actual video and we're gonna see, we're gonna go from three speakers stacked up and we're gonna plug in a wireless microphone, of course give it power and see how long that takes to get a working package. So we flip the lid, we're gonna start stacking it. Now, when you first get it, you do wanna take note to make sure all the connectors are properly secured. So yes, I give it a little tap, I'm not hitting it hard, but I'm, because when it's new, it happens that you don't push these down far enough and they don't make proper connection. So good proper connection. That's what we're hoping for. We're gonna close the top. I grab the power cord. Remember that's your 10 foot power cord included. Now notice we really didn't leave the size of the box. I mean, we're not having things all over the place. We don't have little packages here or there. So I did turn it on just there. I took a moment. I'm gonna plug this guy in. I'm not even gonna lift the lid. I'm gonna just turn that, take a better look. So we are gonna just flip it over for a second. I'm just gonna give it about 25%. 
We're gonna turn the microphone on. We're gonna see where we're at there. And that's it, that's all you have to do. We've done it. It's all working, it's running. I'm on a wireless mic, which happens to be battery operated, so that made everything easy. Uh, but that's all you gotta do. Nothing more complicated than that. So we'll take it to the back and we'll, uh, we'll give it a little play and see what it sounds like. So now I gotta put it away. So, well, pull up my little wireless module. Uh, I'll be honest, I haven't found a very, you know, pleasing, easy way to take this all apart yet because I think it's new and just makes things complicated. So I'm just pulling that all apart. Before we do anything, we do have to turn it off and take that power cord off. There you go. So here we are. The top module goes in first in the middle and then we start placing the other modules beside it. And again, I like putting my knee on top and I think this has to do with the fact that it's new. Uh, you may not have to do this after you've owned yours for a while. And line it up, grab the power cord. I just like putting it on top. I don't find that, you know, if there's a right or wrong place to do that, but you know, do that. Close it back up. Now we're ready to go in the back. Okay, so we're all set up. We've got the JBL Eon 1 set up here. I put all the spacers, so both spacers and the top. Uh, what we've got hooked up today to make it all work is I do have an instrument mic set up in front of the 10 inch subwoofer and that's to help capture the bass better than just the mics off to the back. Now about 16 plus feet away, we've got an MPM 1000 from Marantz on one side and we've got an NPM 3000 on the other side. Uh, one's only about two feet, three feet off the ground. The other one is about five, six feet off the ground. And that's because we've got the array. Now remember, all the speakers are fanned out. So we want to capture that full sound effect that that's giving off. So that's what's going on here for the playlist today. Uh, I thought I'd take a moment and take note of where we get our music from. We get our music from Artlist. Uh, so it's a subscription-based service. We pay an annual membership to be part of that list and it allows us to play all their music on our site. It gives us that license, that royalty that we need. Uh, it's important because on YouTube, you can't just play anything you want. Uh, if you do, you're gonna have to give them money as well. So. We use Artlist because they have an incredible library of content, uh, everything you can possibly think of for videos. And I'm just, I know I'm probably talking to somebody who wants to watch the listen to the speaker, but I mean, it's important because what we're gonna play today, it's, it's music from the hunts, which you can find on Artlist. Uh, more importantly, this is a type of music that you would see on a, on a Starbucks commercial or on an Apple commercial and you wonder where do they get this stuff? Where does Google find this music to put in their TV ads and stuff like that? Well, that's kind of where a lot of these guys go. They go to a place like Artlist, which is a high quality um, place for people to put their music to get it out there in the market. Uh, you can also find the band we're gonna be playing today, which they're called The Hunts and they're from Virginia and they're a great band. And if you haven't heard them before, I hope you enjoy it. I'm also gonna put a link down to, uh, to their site uh, down below. We're also gonna add Artlist's link down below as well, if you're curious about that. Um, so I hope you enjoy it and we'll see you when we're all done. Here you go, The Hunts.
And don't forget, if there's any products that you liked in this video and you'd like to know more about them, including pricing or information like that, there's always links down below for our affiliate page with Amazon.com in the States and for, of course, our website here in Canada, expertisland.com. So you'll find that all right down below. Plus, don't forget, Artlist will be down there. So that's cool. If you haven't seen that yet, you might like to look at that too. And like I said, the music we played today was from The Hunt, plus a whole bunch of other music from Artlist. So everything we demoed today was playing at about 90 dB here. And we were getting it over uh, when I'm standing next to the camera. We're listening to it at about between 78 to uh, 85 dB, that sort of range there. So uh, definitely loud enough to fill a bar or a pub or a small hall. It depends on what you're, you're looking for. But one speaker to project that kind of sound 20 feet away was pretty impressive. There we go. So that's today's episode. It's all about the Eon One. And uh, talk a little bit more about line arrays real quick. This whole back corner, you might notice that there's some speakers missing on the back wall. Uh, we are slowly getting rid of all of that. I've made a commitment that uh, we're going to have anywhere between six and eight line arrays minimum in the showroom. And that'll be occupying the whole back corner. Uh, I do think, and I've probably said this already in the video, uh, line arrays are the future and we're committing big into that line of product. Um, as long as they're good, like the Avante, which is the way they have their style, quick, easy, quick out. I'm only really gonna stick with product that's easy to operate and sounds really good. Uh, JBL does the same thing. Uh, so does Gemini. There's a whole bunch of brands that are like that. I think it should look nice. It should be convenient and easy to set up. You shouldn't have to take a big course to use it. Uh, it should just work. And uh, definitely that's where the JBL is. That's why it's gonna stay. And that's why we're gonna add some more products. So. For today's video, if you liked it, give me a thumbs up. I'd appreciate that very much. It really helps me know if we're going in the right direction. If you wanna know when the next video is coming out, hit the pin button. Don't worry, it's right there. It just lets you know, hey, there's a new video from Expert Island. Uh, and uh, remember, if you haven't subscribed yet, now is always a good time. See you on the next video. Bye for now.